the first of among the three things is the, the bold 2020 vision that you have to make London the greatest city on earth. <laughs> After listening to you, I thought we should, we should change our vision statement in a URA. <laughs> Ours was to make Singapore a great city to live and play, but in London, they aspire to be the greatest city on earth. Uh, the second thing that made a very deep impression was your very clearly articulated uh, infrastructure plan from now to 2050. And third was your very clear idea of what need to be done uh, going forward. And, and in planning, we know that such clarity of vision uh, does not come easily. And especially when you know you, that you have to implement it and make it happen. And the question that I thought I would start just by, by way of kick-starting this uh, discussion is, in your work planning for the city in the long term, especially for a city like London with such great ambition, what is your greatest challenge? I think the, the yes, it is on. Yes, yeah. um, I think the greatest challenge that, that um, we face is a fiscal one. At the end of the day, um, everything comes back to the money, as I said at the beginning. Uh, and infrastructure is expensive. It has long um, payback periods. Um, that's one of the reasons we had to always look at 2050 as being the, the sort of timeline for any kind of infrastructure plan, because most schemes take about 25 years to, to fund, to pay back, um, and to get them to a, a reasonable economic state. So you are having to look quite a long way in the future when you're doing any of your calculations. And I think the, the, the big challenge is to get people to recognise, um, certainly for us in a, a city like London, that if, if London catches a cold, um, the whole country suffers. It isn't just London that suffers. But of course, the view in much of the rest of the country is you spend too much money in London, don't spend anything in London. It needs to be spent in other parts of the country. And we have that tension. I think that's true in many places which have got a large hinterland um, to them. Um, and it's a very difficult argument to run all the time. Um, and um, it's quite a serious argument. But it is about that continuity of funding, um, which I talked about at the end. You've got to be able to fund these things. And, and without it, we really will be in trouble. Um, because if we don't get the transport, we won't be able to get the densities that we need. We won't be able to get the housing that we need at affordable prices. And if we can't do that, the businesses will start to suffer and they'll go elsewhere. They may all come to Singapore. Um, you know, we, we actually have to... Um, Sorry, I, I do joke. But, I mean, it, it's, it's serious. I mean, we're in a worldwide um, economy. People can go anywhere. And people with real skills can go anywhere. Um, they're very, very mobile. And you've got to try and hang on to those, those people, hang on to those businesses. And that's about having the right kind of city. Um, just as an aside, um, when, we're, when we're measuring ourselves, you'll be pleased to hear this, um, when we measure ourselves, we actually don't measure ourselves against any other European city at all. We actually look at Singapore, Hong Kong, New York. Um, that, seriously, those are the cities you have to look at for us. Um, we're not worried what happens in Paris um, or, or something. We're just not worried. But we are worried what happens in Singapore. 